Happy hot news, everybody. Welcome back to the latest episode of what we got going on in the tech world, including the reason why probably all of the cards are sold out. And hey, Apple's just going to destroy your gaming PC. It's just over. And uh, Cyberpunk is apparently amazing. Let's go ahead and get into that after we talk about today's video sponsor, Dr. Squatch. My friends, I don't want to tell you how to smell. I don't want to tell you how to do your shower routine, but I will confess that I smell like my wife. That's because I use whatever soap she buys at the store, and so I end up smelling like my wife, which isn't necessarily a problem. She smells great, mind you, but I don't have a distinguishing scent of my own. Now, Dr. Squatch is helping me smell distinct and like a man with all of their unique flavors. Flavors? What? It's not something you eat, their scents, their fragrances, which not only smell great, but are also way better than the soap that you're traditionally used to using because they're made with natural ingredients, it doesn't have harsh chemicals, and it's a cold pressed hand cut soap that's actually good for your skin. They have so many different fragrances. Amongst my favorite are the Grapefruit IPA, the Bay Rum, as well as the Cedar Citrus. I love all of those. And I will make special mention of the Cool Fresh Aloe because as weird as it's, this, this reminds me of Reese. This smells exactly like Reese and Reese had a scent, and that's cool fresh aloe. So if any of our subscribers want to smell Reese, that's the way to do that. So get some Dr. Squatch for yourself, my friends. Use the link in the video description and coupon code UFD Tech to save 20% off and a free shipping with them. Dr. Squatch, smell good, do good for your skin. Squatch it up. I don't think that's their tagline. And I don't think it's MSI's tagline to have the worst 2020 out of any PC component manufacturer, but hey, they've done it. Not only did, unfortunately, their CEO pass away, but then also they got con confounded a whole bunch of things like paying reviewers to not post reviews and then also the fact that they were scalping their own cards. And now it turns out the reason you can't get an RTX 3090 might be partially to blame because they had $340,000 worth stolen. Yeah, according to a report, there were 40 crates of RTX 3090s stolen from MSI in China, which at retail value equates to around 220 odd cards, which is insane. If that's not retail value and what their cost is, we could actually be seeing a lot more than 220 cards stolen. So it's it's a very, very expensive prospect. Obviously, this isn't the reason you couldn't get your hand on a 3090. The reason you couldn't get your hand on a 3090 was because it's way too gosh dang expensive. But apparently one of the reasons why we can't get the new generation of cards is because there's a huge supply issue that's going on with GDDR6, which is causing cards such as the 3070, 3060 Ti, and RX 6000 series from AMD to not be available, and apparently that will not alleviate until sometime in February. So the VRAM is causing a downturn, but apparently this is not as adversely affecting the 3080 and 3090 because GDDR6 X isn't the issue, so maybe it's the yields on those cards, and then the VRAM is actually the issue with the RTX 3070 and 3060 Ti. But then that begs the question, did Nvidia know that it was gonna potentially be in short supplies? Is that why they launched their cards ahead of time to scoop up all of that stock and reserve it for the GDDR6X and their 3070s just to make sure that they could take it from AMD because AMD took their fabrication facility production at TSMC. And so Nvidia was like, ha, if you can produce your cards, you can't produce the VRAM, which means you can't sell them to anybody, which means that we get to actually sell all of them. And because there's just a report of Nvidia having more cards available than AMD. And this is a big deal because Nvidia and AMD actually ship their boards with VRAM to their board makers if they're using reference cards. So AMD and Nvidia can't even do that to get third-party cards out into the open which apparently is happening even more. Today is officially the launch of the RX 6900 XT, allegedly is supposed to be coming out on December 8th. Well, allegedly, because uh, the largest Swiss retailer only received 35 of those cards. Oh, that's just such a bad launch for AMD. This seems to be on par with the amount of cards that they produced for the RX 6800 and 6800 XT with a lot of retailers saying that they only got a couple at launch. So it just seems like stock issues all around are really, really bad. But it's a really, really good time to be wanting to buy an Apple computer because there's a new Bloomberg report who's actually been very good at uh, behind the scenes information on leaking Apple stuff that Apple is preparing a 32 core Mac Pro M1 chip, which is is just gonna be insanely fast if they can get that to scale at all if they're high performance cores. They're apparently also developing a 16 core big plus four small core version of the M1, which could make the 16 inch MacBook Pro insanely fast. Like I've been testing out the MacBook Air with the M1 chip and just in the optimized apps, it is insanely fast. 
how it's insane how fast a laptop with no cooling fan that doesn't actually get hot can actually smack my 10 900 K and 3080 PC around in certain applications. It's just Apple's doing some really good stuff with their M1 and to see that they could potentially scale this up with pro versions, this might create an actual problem with PC manufacturers where it's the software and the just combined integration of the SOC where Apple is now gonna start to pull ahead in ways that we haven't seen before. And apparently Intel's trying to get ahead of that because they're testing a 36 core Ice Lake chip that's supposedly gonna go on high-end desktop because it was found in a Geekbench listing where it was running simultaneously with another chip. So they had 72 cores on an Intel platform, which hasn't been able to happen before. Still not as much as AMD's Epic 64 core ones, but it's, it's getting better. And then we also have some indication of Intel's Rocket Lake performance, which is gonna be their 11th gen processors. And it seems like they're essentially gonna catch back up to AMD even at sub five gigahertz performance at eight cores. Now, obviously the big question comes into what's the price gonna be? Is Intel gonna be able to actually price themselves like an underdog or are they gonna continue in the route that they are where it's just like, nothing's a problem. What competition? You still buy our stuff at high prices, right? But Intel does get some things right, including integrating features that AMD didn't even think to do, which includes the resizable bar for smart ass memory, ASRock's implementing it on their Z490s as clever ass memory, MSI's adding it to their 400 series motherboards. But there's a report that came out that said that Intel could actually support this all the way back to Haswell, whereas AMD didn't think to introduce it until Ryzen 5000. So that's why you can only do it on the brand new chips from AMD because the resizable bar is just not actually supported on the previous chips, whereas Intel has actually supported it for quite some time. Speaking of an Intel PC, which probably not a whole lot of you are building and probably not a whole lot of you are gonna buy this, but the Razer Tomahawk Modular Desktop has officially launched. It is now sold out, but this puppy costs $2,400 without a GPU. And you might be asking, what, what does it have in it, Brett? Well, it has an i9 9898 80 H, I can't even say this. It's, it's a ninth gen Intel mobile processor, my friends. It's an overclockable one, but it's one of those Intel NUCs. And it goes for $2,400 when it includes a power supply, that NUC, and a 500 gig NVMe SSD. What? Yes, you what, mate? That's insane. That's just, ah! That's too much money. It's really cool because it's like modular upgradability and it looks really neat, but oh, that's a lot of money. But you're gonna need a powerful PC in order to run Cyberpunk because reviews came out yesterday and as you can see the Metacritic, I'm not gonna go into like any spoilers here, but the Metacritic review is 91. A lot of reviews are saying, yes, it was worth the wait. Yes, it's everything you expected it to be. And it's just phenomenal. It turns out it's good. Other people are saying, ah, it's kind of a buggy glitchy mess, which, you know, they aren't working with the day one patch. So we have to see if that's gonna change anything. But but in case you want to play it on day one, you can do that on GeForce Now, so you don't have to download it, you don't have to patch it, you don't even have to worry about that. You can just launch it on GeForce Now, you're gonna be good because the GOG version will be available there. This kind of goes in the face of Stadio where they were like, our marketing is that you can play it on day one without a patch on Cyberpunk. Well, Cyberpunk got delayed so much that competitors now exist and now every other people can do it too. Which, you might wanna actually use GeForce now in order to play Cyberpunk because according to benchmarks that have come out, Cyberpunk's gonna be really rough on your PC. Tom's Hardware tested a bunch of different graphics cards and I'm gonna give you just a preview because I'm doing a full video of this over on UFD Tech. Uh, but the GTX 1060 six gig at 1080p medium got 37 FPS average. Ow, that hurts. But TikTok doesn't appear to be hurt because the deadline for it to go away, which was December 4th, came and went and there's no deal and nothing's changed and everything's still fine. There's been like article after article that's come up like at, at least twice a week where it's like the US government delayed the TikTok deadline. I don't think TikTok's going away personally. Uh, so yeah, the, the deadline went away and it wasn't extended and everything's still there. So I'm not gonna report on this until there's actually something big going on with TikTok in the future. And there's something big going on with Voyager, which, you know, at, for a probe that was launched in the 1970s, hot dang, it is still producing some good information. We found out that there's a new shockwave that was detected from the Voyager probes because of coronal mass ejections. And it was something that was theorized by physicists, but now we've actually detected it with the Voyager probes, which is just mm, 250 kilohertz processors on these things that just, 
absolute legends. And another legendary space thing, the Japanese Hayabusa 2 probe returned its asteroid sample to Earth on, on December 6th. It was collected and now we have asteroid space junk. This, this happened, I reported on this in hot news well over a year ago when the Hayabusa probe actually landed on the asteroid and was able to make it off. Well, now they collected it and it's here. It's back on the Earth. We got asteroid space junk in Earth, which we do because they collide with us. Anyways, I'm gonna collide with some Dr. Squatch soap later on when I shower. You should too. Check it out, the link in the video description. Use coupon code UFDTECH to save 20% and get free shipping. It's worth it. It smells. Smells mainly. That's exactly what my wife said when I asked her to, to sniff these. She was like, that smells manlier than what I use. Hot dang does it. Anyways, hot dang this episode of Hot News is over. Hit the like button if you enjoyed it. Get subscribed to stay up to date on all of the tech news that we do here on the Hot News channel. I'll see you in the next video. Bye. And Dr. Squatch, ah, Dr. Squatch is the best new way that I can actually smell like a man. <laughs>